Hello and welcome to Explorers of Elsewhere's second campaign. Hi! Hi! Hello! Yeah. Hey, how you doing? It's you, it's me, it's all of us, yeah! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We're having an evening, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> it's an emotional roller coaster. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but... Hello, all you beautiful people um, who have joined, who have joined the player seats, jumped in the player seats. Uh, I'm DM Dan. Uh, this is uh, these are my beautiful new crew members, crew mates, crew members, something along those lines. Um, we've got we've got a Julia, we've got an Errol, we've got a JC, we've got a Nate, we've got a Meg. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi. We've oh, also got um, a, two daisies in the chat. We have got two daisies, yes. Um, cat cam is now officially <laughs> going to be a thing. <laughs> hey. um, yes, we have arrived on this auspicious day, which is the start of the second campaign of uh, the Elsewhere setting, uh, Elysia Rising. Uh, I'm excited. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> um are you five are you are you excited are you pumped are you ready nah, not that bothered, ready, really. but <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely pumped of course we are amazing right the great well. thing about blaze is you don't have to be ready you can do it in flashback <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yes you can retroactively be happy amazing well um there's new campaign there's a new cast and also there's a new title screen. Ooh. I reckon we should watch it right now. <laughs> Welcome to Elysia, the jewel of the north. On our gilded streets, fortune and fame can be found by anyone. Hi, I'm Julia, and I'm playing Magpie, an ace of our luck. Hi, I'm Nate. And I'm playing Cavern, a dragon scent slide. Hi, I'm Meg. I'm playing Frida, a wolfkin cutter. Hi, I'm JC, and I'll be playing Algernon, an ace of our spider. Hello, I'm Errol. I am playing Atta, a goblin whisper. And my name is DM Dan. I will be the games master on this adventure. So come on in and marvel at our wonders. Make sure you see the beautiful views we have to offer. And don't mind the ghosts. They're friendly, really. Grab yourselves a seat and make yourselves welcome in the city of Elysia. Anyone with the ability to remember has memories of a beautiful world filled with flourishing civilizations and peace and prosperity. These are the kinds of memories we cling on to, to lift our spirits. But anyone with the ability to remember will also have memories of seeing their first gods descending from the skies, the conflict that engulfed elsewhere, and the devastation that followed in the lead up to the eschaton. For most, the cataclysmic crisis that shattered and restructured the world is a memory they have started to put behind them as two years have passed since the end of the War of Dragons. As we speak, explorer expeditions have struck out into the wilderness, new towns and outposts being established, and civilizations are piecing themselves back together. But most is not all. Some remain lost, struggling to survive in an unprecedented hell. This is the story of the fall and rise of Elysia. And so. We find in a swirling sea of pinks and purples a gleaming blue sphere ever so slightly translucent. And within the sphere is a skyline of a once great city called Elysia. And counterpoint to the somewhat bleak situation that Elysia finds herself in 
The people of Elysia are coming together with a tad more happiness than they might normally have. Children, orphans, run through the streets, laughing and crying, uh, shoving and pushing into one another in a playful manner as matrons and carers desperately try to herd them together. There are barks and calls uh, from pop-up market vendors desperately trying to sell different types of mushroom-based cuisines. But for the extra, all the extra splashes of colour all seem to be gravitating towards the centre of the sphere. Spire Park, once a place of gleaming white stone roads, soaring towers topped with azure tiles, all glimmering in the sun. The purple hues that rain, the purple light that rains down from above diminishes it somewhat, but not enough to dull the spirits of the citizens of Elysia. As the crowds gather in the under the in the shadow of the large castle keep that dominates the center of this city district known as Spire Park, as they gather into a place that was once verdant and green, but now is a peculiarly pale, petrified kind of color. There is excitement, there is trepidation, there is hope for what is to come. As the crowds murmur and chatter excitedly to one another, eyes turn to what appears to be a, a stage of sorts that has been erected under the Statue of Liberation. A statue relatively new, less than two years old, uh, just over two years old, that commemorates the removal of the traitorous House Antelier, the ace of our great house who once upon a time built this fine city. The statue celebrates the, the freedom the city of Elysia won for itself during the War of Dragons, when House Antelier was found to be traitorous and cast from the city. An elderly female keeper slowly ascends a flight of stairs up to the stage, wearing rather regal and fine clothing, which for the crowds is quite unusual for her. And with a smile, the elderly keeper called Tavarian looks across the gathered crowds of Elysia and a heartfelt smile spreads across her face. As she raises her hand gently, the crowds begin to simmer down. Children of Elysia, she begins. I am honoured to see you all here on this day. This day marks the second anniversary of the shrouding. And it is on this day that my mind remembers everything we have sacrificed and fought for to make it to this day. It reminds me of all of our heroism. It reminds me of all of our pain and loss. But it reminds me that we are one. As the old keeper continues her speech, one 
individual, one listener, uh, may or may not find himself slightly uh, distracted from what the old lady is saying. Algonon, where do we find you? So within the crowd of people, uh, from behind uh, a grey umbrella, keeping him sheltered from the constant drizzle that he's become accustomed to in Elysia, mm-hmm. uh, we see uh, Algonon Cardwallader uh, dashing Acevar with black hair and piercing red eyes. Um, he walks around underneath a heavy cloak um, with the aid of a crutch on his right arm. His hood is up, uh, concealing his features somewhat from the rest of the crowd. Um, and he is paying attention. <laughs> he is paying attention to uh, what Tor of Vienne is saying, taking it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> taking it with a pinch of salt. Um, but he's also scouring the crowd looking for one person in particular as you kind of scan the crowds uh, left and right um, you like even as you stand up straight as as best you can to see to peer over the heads um, of the other crowds um, you struggle to kind of pick out someone who you would assume to be quite easy to pick out given the description of this mysterious person um, and as you kind of frown to yourself, um, this this park is busier than you would perhaps. Well, maybe you did expect it to be this busy, but um, your head glances up to one of the nearby rooftops of one of the tall, um, kind of noble buildings off to the sides of the park. And as you peer up, you see a shadowy figure crouched uh, like a like a gargoyle. Magpie. Hmm. Why are you up on the roofs? Um, Magpie has gone up onto a roof overlooking the park um, to get a better view of the crowd. Uh, she's managed to slip away from her family who were obviously at at the speech listening down in the crowd uh, I think she said something about oh I see my friends and she sort of slipped slipped away and uh, got the dark cloak hooded cloak out of her bag that uh, she was carrying and uh, managed to make it up shimmy up onto a into an alley and then shimmy up onto a rooftop and so she's she's having a look from up there to see if she can spot this person that they are meant to be looking for this purple clad Lorivar, i believe mm. so she's scanning the crowd from above she likes to have high vantage points okay um and from your perch as you scan the crowds um you can see uh quite impressively that I mean, you wouldn't be... It looks like, from way up here, it's almost like the entirety of Elysia is beginning to filter into um, Unity Park mm. um, to listen to Tavarian, uh, the, the the sweetheart, the, the mother of Elysia, some, the grandmother of Elysia, some have referred to her as. <laughs> um, and... Mm. As you see her, her like even from up, up where you are, whilst you maybe can't pick out all of the words that she's saying, her calm, seemingly soft voice still has this kind of presence and resonance. Um, almost as if everyone is deliberately kind of focusing on listening to her words, such as the, um, the, like the, the respect that the people of Alicia have mm. for this old keeper. Mm. Magpie definitely smiles with appreciation at Tavarian's words, I think. 
she has a lot of admiration for her. What, out of curiosity, Magpie, what was it that kind of, that Tavarian did over the space of the last two years that really kind of won you round? I think it's just the way she is such a, she cares so much for the people of Alicia and uses her reputation and her influence to better the lives of people who mm. are less fortunate, um, who go without. I think that's the thing that Magpie, I don't know, there's probably been quite a lot of specific acts that she's done, but overall I think it's just her dedication to the city and the people that sure. Magpie really admires. Okay. Um, as you think back to that, you, in the crowd, you catch the, the glance, like you glance upon uh, Algernon, who's peering up to you on your perch. Um, and as you return to your scanning duties, um, who who do you spot in the crowd? I think my eyes alight upon uh, a rather muscular lady. <laughs> okay. Um, as you glance upon this um, rather kind of stocky, well-muscled woman, um, what do we find Frida doing? Oh, so Frida, um, who, as uh, as you both put it, quite succinctly, is quite quite muscular, quite brawny, um, and sort of hair tied back, um, very sort of. Um, you know quite plainly and dressed in in fairly like fla fairly plain clothes too um but she will be by the city watch and some of the guards that are sort of um overseeing this event particularly on the sort of the more of the the sort of outskirts um the ones that aren't you know um necessarily on you know full duty of guarding tavarian and will be doing her best to distract them with, you know, banter and and sort of ribald chatter, um, and maybe even a, a sort of, you know, a, a a challenge or two to an arm wrestle, <laughs> while uh, while the sort of the goings on of the crowd um, happen around them, um, just in a in a in an attempt to sort of distract them away from, you know, other members of the crew that might be, might be skulking around, sort of draw, draw their eye and attention. Sure. Um, in which case, as you kind of, kind of relatively flippantly uh, interact with some of the city guard, um, and looking around, there's a, as you would kind of expect, there are a lot of city guard um, in this place as well uh, and you can see from the, the differentiations in the patterns and like heraldries on their uh, circular shields um, that they've kind of it's all different kind of precincts from around the city all kind of converging here um, and a couple of there, there's a couple of uh, guard that um, after kind of giving each other a little glance kind of step forward to take you up on some of your your offers of feats of strength and, and arm wrestling before well, who you presume to be almost like sergeants pulling them back in line and briefly chastising them and flicking you a look um, as if to say piss off <laughs> um, and as you kind of smirk to yourself um, you hear like, a, a, like an applause and a cheer from the crowd um, as uh, and you clearly they've reacted to something that uh, Tavarian has has mentioned in her speech um, and as you look up to uh, like peer at the old keeper um, on the stage all the way on the other side of this crowd um, your eyes are drawn to Tavarian's right and stood behind her with somewhat less joy and enthusiasm on his face as the crowd has is a rather stiff and stuffy looking bald Lorivar with a, a sweeping kind of curled moustache um, mutton chops wearing a very um, kind of regal looking red um, sash across his chest 
um, his arms, like his hands clasped at the small of his back as if standing to attention. Um, and even from this distance, you can almost, you can pick out that ever so slight sneer that he has on his face as he stares at the back of this old keeper's head. And you recognize this man as Marshal Guion Algarve, the Marshal of uh, the City Watch, um, and currently uh, ruler of Elysia, thanks to uh, the continuing martial law that has been established for the past two and a bit years. Um, flanking uh, Marshal Algarve um, are two heavily armed, like heavily black armored um, soldiers. You would you call them soldiers, right? In, in, contrast to the guard that you've been chatting to you recognize these as the black guard um they stand stoically their gold face masks um gleaming in the purple light that um comes down from above um authoritative authoritatively holding um the wicked looking halberds that they're known for wielding um and as you watch Algarve, um, Tavarian says something and you almost, you see him kind of like roll his eyes, shake his head ever so slightly and then carry on like putting on a, uh, a begrudging smile for the crowds. Um, as you sort of like laugh and kind of turn back to look through the crowds, who, who do you f see? I see a a rather handsome and well dressed dragon scent. Okay. Um, in which case, yeah, as a as this kind of burly wolfkin woman uh, peers across, uh, what do we find Cavern doing? Uh, so Cavern, who is a sort of light greyish lilac. Uh, dragon scent with piercing blue eyes um, standing there quite well dressed in, in, in his sort of finest that he can find at that time um, is actually standing with uh, a couple of other sort of more uh, sort of more aristocratic uh, group of people um, and he is currently sort of holding his arm uh, for a um, for a lady, uh, a lure of our lady, who's currently sort of hugging his arm tightly um, as a sort of as his as her sort of companion um, for the day's events. And while she is sort of tittering um, to her friends who are sort of around there as well, uh, Averin is sort of sort of looking in, pretending that he's listening, engaging, laughing, chortling politely. Um, but also sort of scouring uh, the crowd as well for for the target that we've we've been given. Okay. Um, have you uh, like very casually asked uh, any of your companions <laughs> if they've seen uh, seen this kind of purple clad lore of our lady, or are you uh, just engaging in their tete a tete? I'm more engaging in their in their tata -tata -tata. I'm sort of not pulling not trying to pull away the engagement from them if they feel like I'm looking at other ladies then obviously that's not going to be good for sure. for the for the day's <laughs> events of course of course um in which case yeah as you as you kind of do your due diligence with the smiling and the nodding and the uh, the laughing when required um the like the, the company that you're with, um, they they kind of looking over with their pa parasols and kind of resting on their um, collarbones and oh, she is wonderful, isn't she? I mean, she she's not got any money or anything like that, but she she's she's just she's just friend, she's like a nan, isn't she? Oh, she's like the nan we never had. Oh, we do love. Tavarian is a sweetheart, bless her. Oh, she doesn't look like she's got much left in her, but. I'm, I'm glad that she's here. You hear them just kind of, yeah, whittering to each other. Um, and as you take the opportunity to, to glance left and right, um, you spy uh, 
like you happen to glance down slightly um, through the crowds, and you spy a peculiar goblin. What is Atta doing? Oh, um, Atta is. Let's go with like just. Just over three foot tall. Let's let's go around about around about that. Very small, yeah. Very small. Um, in some reasonably clean like overalls in a bright yellow and uh, dis distinctly mismatched boots. So definitely two different boots on on the feet. Um, she has long dark hair that goes right past uh, her butt to like the backs of her thighs. Uh, it's kind of frizzy from the rain. Uh, she She's sort of chewing on what looks like a sort of dried rat's tail in the same way that you would like chew on licorice. Okay. Just like gnawing on the end of it. Yeah. And she, mm. she has whatever uh, Elysia passes for like the, pe the paper, the daily paper kind of over the top of her head to try and keep some rain off of the top of her head just kind of balance there um and she's she's doing a couple of things she's she's listening to uh to, 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 can you pronounce the name again please dan to tavarian tavarian She's she's listening to Tavarian, but uh, every now and again she's looking in the crowds. Uh, she seems fixated on a number of things and then kind of snaps out and kind of does a little bit more of a searching motion, presumably for this purple clad individual that we're looking for. But just maybe only once or twice during the speech, she's, she kind of looks a little bit more skyward and kind of slack jaw chewing on the rat's tail. <laughs> staring up at the sphere. Okay. So yeah, as you as you glance up um at the, the kind of the blue energy field that arcs overhead, um it's it's peculiar. As you look kind of like wherever you're looking at it directly, it's almost completely see through. Um it's only as it kind of reaches the peripherals of your vision that it becomes a bit more opaque in a very kind of sky blue, like electric sky blue. But through the through the part that you're directly looking at, um, you can see this roiling kind of purple thing, like this fuchsia miasma. Um, and like you squint ever so slightly because for, for, for every so often, what could almost constitute as like a, a face appears, like uh, like someone pressing their their face against a window, peering in. Um, before the shapes shift and move away. Um, and have you got like any kind of trinkets or doodads with you? Um, the doodads and trinkets are, you know, I, I feel like there might have been a, a, a some kind of talking to before we left the hideout. They're mostly hidden in pockets and pouches at the moment, not to kind of draw too much suspicion at the the nature of the the doodads and the what's it's that Atta keeps upon her person. Okay. Um, as you're kind of gazing up, lost in a bit of a daydream, um, you hear, like, just to your side, ah, you got a tail! And you glance down to see a young kind of Lorivar girl um, who's, you know, she's, she's quite kind of muddy. Like, she's got mud and dirt on her face, but she's clearly been dressed in, like, the finest dress little that kind of goes down to her knees kind of thing, like a little, you know, roughly sleeves and, and whatnot. Like, you know, the family's best, best dress for her. But, um, yeah, so a bit of dirt and mud on her face, like there's a string of, like, boogers and snot running down mm. from her nostril, and she, like, looking at you, um, like, with, oh, like, puffy freckled cheeks but yeah she's just looking like at the slightly swishing kind of tail that's poking out from your thigh length hair i've never seen a goblin with a tail before she says no you have and like you watch as like this girl's eyes light up for a moment and then she just like runs off 
like shouting, Matron, matron, I found a goblin with a tail. She says, um, yeah, and like, yeah, she she's lost to the crowds. Um, and it's, I guess, for you, it would be quite odd because, uh, as far as you've known, you've had a tail for all your life. <laughs> yeah, as the, as did the rest of your family. Um, mm -hmm. but yes, uh, you've noticed that uh, other goblins tend not to mention it. You might catch a couple of furtive looks, but otherwise, it doesn't really come up. Um, apart from with children, it would seem. <laughs> and as you kind of turn your head away from the, the small child to carry on kind of <laughs> looking back up at the bubble, um, you hear like another kind of applause from the crowd as Tavarian um, continues her speech. Um, Algonon, you furrow your brow as it's ever so ever so slightly frustrating that um, you haven't managed to find your target yet, even though you've got you know all of your um, fellow crewmates spread out through uh, Unity Park. You like no one's kind of let you know that they've they've laid eyes on this this Lorivar. Um and as you think back to the meeting that led you here um the like the sounds and colors around you kind of fade away as you kind of move into your memories um would it be safe to say that all five of you were in attendance mm -hmm. yeah okay in which case um it took place the, the meeting itself took place in um like the upstairs office study of uh, a converted townhouse um clearly the prized possession um of the rather overweight and sweaty goblin in front of you was the large lacquered wooden table that he currently um, kind of has his feet up on as he leans back in a, a creaky chair um, and because of the, the angle with which he's leaning his chins kind of squish slightly against his breastbone as he tips up his kind of bowler hat to get a better look at you with his squinty little eyes Musto Varm the kingpin, if you will, of the coalition of uh, gangs known as the Cobbles. And he studies you, um, so he studies you with his eyes, and you see him just sort of like rolling his uh, kind of cane, his um, kind of gem encrusted cane um, in his right hand. Look. Yeah. It's an easy job, okay? But basically, it's ever since you've decided to spring up in my turf, I'll quite very be quick to remind you. I feel that just a small task and we can let relatively bygones be bygones. I hear you're pretty good at moving through the city with a with a bit of subtlety and unfortunately I would have some of my boys do this job for me but it would seem that they're a bit too loud I'll pay you obviously as long as you get me the information I need but there are rumours I've, I've, I've been told that there's this strange strange woman She's been seen walking around the streets. She, I, she's been noticed looking at a couple of my holdouts. I, yeah, I hear that she's uh, been snooping around. She's been, uh, like, she's been accosting some of the guards. She's been, uh, it's been seen in quite a lot of the, the the gambling rings at the tellers. Thing is, no one's ever seen her before, and then suddenly she's all over the place. And you know what that says to me? And he leaves a very long pause. <laughs> Aye. It seems to be, Musto, 
that if you want to get yourself a girl, you know, you can take ads out in the paper for that. It only <laughs> costs a couple of silver. <laughs> he, like, he, when flecks of spit fly out of his mouth as he kind of, yeah. um, and yeah, Algonon, you have to move your hand ever so slightly to avoid one of the spittle bubbles from landing on the back of your of your palm. No! It means she's up to no good. And I don't like people who are up to no good unless it's my people doing the no good. Alright? It's an easy job. I just want you to find this woman, tailor a little bit, find out what she's up to. If you have to, um, if you have to break a couple of ribs in the process, and I'm not condoning that. M maybe I am, but I don't. If you have to, then you have to. But the more subtle you can do it, the better. Because if I can, if I can find out what she's up to without her knowing that I know what she's up to, I'll be laughing. Musto, we've uh, we've done this dance several times before. You'll know we are smugglers. Perhaps uh, if we do this job for you, you might land an actual smuggling job across our desk. He um, he thinks about that. Like you see him, he's he does the thing that you know he does when he's deep in genuine thought. You see him start chewing on the inside of his gums. <laughs> well, tell you what. There's a, I've got a couple of, um, I've got a couple of enterprises that are springing up, you know, a couple of, a couple of little passion projects, you could call them, just kind of popping up here and there around the city. And some of them may involve transferring supplies from A to B. So if you can demonstrate to me your discretion in doing this job, then I suspect I will be that much more confident to give you one of these uh, logistical jobs. Well, it must be a relief for you to have a competent crew in your pocketbook for a change. As you say that, like his, <laughs> like his face goes a bit blank as he looks at you, and like the the rest of you all, you all kind of immediately hear, like you see, you comprehend the zinger. <laughs> <laughs> but Algonon's just launched out. But, like, Musto blinks at you a few times. And it's quite clear he didn't get it. <laughs> and he... Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, of course. Of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you're all in interested, let's say it'll, it'll be a, a, an introductory fee. Okay. We'll we'll say we'll say four gold for information you can bring substantial information you can bring me back on this on this on this woman. Um, I had I had Lazy Tom do a sketch of her, and he slides across this really <laughs> badly drawn <laughs> picture um, of what you presume to be a Lorivar woman. Um, but even through the kind of lacking artistic direction um there are a, a number of very kind of defining features that stand out uh this woman uh, appears to be wearing like a top hat she seems to have dark hair bar a shock of like light hair running uh, across her sort of like right fringe um the to to look at it um magpie as you kind of peer down at the picture it, she almost looks like a circus ringleader from mm. the days of past when there were circuses in Elysia. Mm. Um, her face is like you notice that she's had a pair of they, they look like glasses perched on her nose, and um, you you suspect they're sort of like uh, what they pince nez, is that how you pronounce yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so a pair, a pair of those glasses. That's that's those have been kind of drawn in very thickly over the top mm. of her face, uh, which is just like a circle with two dots and a line for a mouth kind of thing. Um, and she appears to be kind of she she has a cane 
crudely kind of like a walking stick type thing drawn in her right hand. Mm. I'm out, as you well, you'll clearly be able to immediately identify from this drawing. Uh, Lazy Tom's a bit of a virtuoso with, a, <laughs> with the charcoal, as you can see. <laughs> Quite, I imagine it will see it next summer in the National Gallery. Oh, uh, well, yeah, as I say, I've got a few passion projects, but yes, yes. <laughs> well, unless you've got any questions, uh, we we have our suspicions. Like, given that she's getting her nose into all of our businesses, we can't help but imagine that she's probably going to be in and around Unity Park. When that old bird, Tavarian, gives is giving her a speech, you know, when she rattles on for ages about like everyone being happy and everyone working together, like, like you know, like that's a brand new idea. So I reckon you get your little peepers down to that park, and then you'll be able to sniff her out dead easy. And when you do, see what she's up to. Give her a little follow. See how she goes. Uh, don't spook her. Unless you have to. But yeah, you come back and you tell me. Even, even if it's where I can find her after the fact. Any questions? Well, uh, I mean the obvious. Go on, love. When we find her. Mm. What do you want? Do you want us to tell her? Do you want, do you want us to approach her on your behalf? Well, no, this is what I mean. If you can be a bit discreet, if you oh, can find right. out stuff about her without her knowing that you found out stuff about her, right? And then that means that I'll know stuff about her without her knowing that I know stuff about her. I, I see, right? Like her favorite food and where she likes to go for for walks in the on the weekend. What flowers she likes? I mean, the goblin blinks quickly. For a few moments. I mean, if you're good enough to find out that, then bloody hell. You are, you are confident, in you? Like Algy said. Um, and the goblin, like, throws a look to you, Cavern. And you, pretty boy, you keep your mitts off her. At least for now. Maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe we'll need your skills at a, <laughs> at a later point. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, you just um, you just let me know. Yeah, absolutely. He says, and he kind of mops his top lip. <laughs> um, again, yeah, if there were no other questions, uh, um, Algamon, mm we we return to the present as you shudder slightly at the thought of that little gremlin of a goblin. Um. And, yeah, you're, he was right. It should have been relatively easy to see someone as kind of standout-ish as a slow of our, but no. Uh, what do you do in this moment? Um, so I'm going to make my way through the crowd um, towards where Cavern is. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to approach the little group of people around him. Um, and just speak to the, the lady he's accompanying. Uh, excuse me, miss, I am an old soldier and I was w wondering if I could borrow the dragon scent to uh, bless my injured leg, just for a second. Um, and the two, uh, sorry, the, the two women in the group that Cavern's in um, turn to look to you and like, as they, one of them turns and starts to say, oh, of course, they stop and look at you and like stare for a, a moment too long to be comfortable because you know that in this moment these two Lorivar women are staring directly into your eyes your uh, yes bright red eyes and they immediately kind of it, it seemingly throws them onto the back foot slightly and they uh um of course. Um, uh, 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 come on, Tilly. Um, but Papa was saying that he needed us anyway. And the two women, like one of them, places a hand on your shoulder, Cavern, um, and then they 
like scoot away. Um, as they do, the, the, the final member of the group, um, like a really kind of quiffy um, Lorivar, like young Lorivar man, turns around and uh, so anyway, uh, oh, oh, where did Tilly go? Uh, uh, if you find them, tell them that I'm looking for them. He says to you, Cavern. Um, the the young man kind of looks you up and down, Algonon, and then this oaf like disappears in the other direction, looking for the two girls. I'm, I'm sure you I'm sure you're used to it, Ali, but don't pay any mind to them. Yes, quite well. Maybe your uh, divine nature can heal my affliction. Any any sign of our quarry, Cavern? Not that I've seen. Um, no. I mean, obviously, there's quite a, an eclectic amount of people around here, but I can't say that it's been any luck. No, well, I've yet to find our uh, purple-suited uh, ringmaster. As expertly drawn by Lazy Tom. <coughs> mm. <laughs> I was quite eager to ask whether or not Lazy Tom was actually three years old or something, but <laughs> I guess this is all we've got. Like as as you say that, Cavern, um, you hear like yet another kind of ripple of applause and cheering through the crowd. Um, there's a couple of like whoa, 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 we love you, Um kind of bursting from the, the gathered masses um, and it seems like her speech um, is coming to a to a close um, and Catherine, like you have spent the, a large majority of your life kind of using your words to manipulate people um, and as you kind of look over at Tavarian who's arguably kind of doing the same but perhaps with different intentions <laughs> um what is it that kind of warms you up to the old deer? Uh, Avrin has definitely seen her have talks with people from the church in, you know, sort of civilised debates, I would say. Um, and he has seen a couple of times um, her actually making his old mentor uh, quite flustered um during these debates which is a very rare sight yes. um and he's and he highly appreciates seeing that yeah um if, if there's not something that you definitely know about tavarian um like her her physical posture um is arguably quite uh disarming um and no one expects the kind of firebrand oratory that comes out of her mouth as she um, deftly outmaneuvers people in kind of arguments and uh, seemingly gets them to agree to things that they arguably wouldn't want to agree to without kind of like they only realize when it's too late, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and she, hence how she's been able to kind of accomplish and achieve so much for the common people. Um, yeah, as you kind of look over at her and you kind of smile to yourself as as you watch this maestro at work. Um, yeah, what is it you do with uh, with Algonon at your side? Hmm. I think we need to check in with the others. Maybe they've had a bit more luck. Sure. Um, as you mentioned that... Uh, Atta, you're, um, <laughs> again, as you're kind of staring up, uh, kind of lost in thought as you stare at the, the blue shimmering field overhead, um, this shadow looms over you. Um, and Frida, you kind of just move your head slowly into Atta's field of view from above. Um, as, and yeah, uh, you, you've, you found, you found your goblin companion. Uh, she seems... Creed, uh, you make a better door than a window. <laughs> right, um, coming from you, I have no idea whether that's a compliment or not, so I'll take it as the former, I think. Yeah. Have you, uh, have you been keeping an eye out for this, uh, for this woman? I've, uh, just been speaking to the boys in the City Watch and no one's, no one's seen anyone of her description about. I think it's a bit of a lost cause, if you ask me. 
No, I haven't seen her, but... Mm, I was gonna maybe ask the kids if they wanted to play a game. Find the purple cloak. Right, you know what? That's That's actually a pretty good idea. Yeah, I mean, you know, better than nothing. But who's good with Kit? Is Kavrin good with Kit? I don't know. I, mean, I saw I saw you speaking to some snot-nosed brat earlier. So I think you're probably better with kids than uh, Kavrin. He'd probably, I don't know, charm them to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. Okay, I'll go start a game, I guess guess. You tell Kavrin and Algonon that I gonna go over there. I absolutely. I've heard kids like fireworks. Maybe uh, show off some of your, your lovely firework collection. I know you always keep a couple on you. And Frida gives uh, Atra a sort of conspiratory, conspiratory wink. Sure. Atra gives you like a really big one back, but it kind of <laughs> glitches a bit. And then <laughs> okay. sort of spins and heads towards where the kids ran off to. Um, in which case, as you kind of rush up to, like there is a, a gaggle of children, um, and you, the, it's clear that they are from one of um, Elysia's kind of many orphanages um they all seem to have like a a colored bit of ribbon um attached to them like tied around their arms so um like the the orphanage workers know which ones are theirs um but yeah as they as you approach and like a couple of kids kind of turn and look to you and they they don't seem as kind of shy around you as they do like the adults <laughs> Um, like the uh, like everyone else around them, perhaps because you are all of a similar height. Um, yeah, if you're, are you kind of tasking these kids to? Yeah, I think because I don't have any pips in like social <laughs> skills. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Dan, are you ready? Are you ready for yeah. my pitch? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna approach these kids and I'm gonna kind of look in my pockets for any sort of of the just unhinged junk that I cobble together with like things like toys that spark anything that look I make things that look ridiculous and dangerous like you know in Toy Story all the weird looking to creepy toys yeah um think that but like extra dangerous um <laughs> I'm gonna get kind of rummage around in my bag for one of these hellish contraptions and kind of go, go think, hey kids, if I'll I wanna play a game and if you are if you can if you can win and winning is when you find when I think you find a person or people wearing purple I'm going to show you how cool these toys, how much fire these toys can make. There's a... Can that be Tinker? <laughs> well, you know what? Like, we'll, we'll blow straight on past it. There's just a smorgasbord of just wonderstruck faces. Oh, like, their eyes are bulging out their heads almost as much as your own. Um, like, and they... Oh, that's how fire. There's excited murmuring throughout uh, amongst the children, um, and like one of the, one of them, uh, a slightly kind of pudgy little uh, boy with kind of brace like bracer trouser, like dungaree type things, like looks left and right and goes, "I'm gonna find her first! And just boom, he rushes off um, into the crowds, and you hear like a cry of surprise from uh, one of the carers, and whilst the carer is distracted, the other kids like taking it as a, their opportunity, they all kind of scatter. Um, as well, just kind of leaving you with your little, like little trinket stood in front of the orphanage worker. <laughs> could could I possibly, if I have a rough idea of where Magpie might be, some I just kind of look and glance around the roofs and just try and make some eye contact and mm -hmm. yeah, sure, Ma sure, sure. Magpie 
look, you you do catch sight of the roof that you know Mag, you sort of last saw Magpie on, and she catches your gaze, and you just see a kind of like a a shrug from this shadowy figure, like <laughs> n- not seen them. <laughs> well, Breda's gonna come behind you and just clap her hand on your shoulder, but like, see, I knew you had it in you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Well, maybe they find someone and maybe our eyes in the skies will see. Well, uh, as you as you kind of suppose that to Frida, Magpie, uh, as like up from your vantage point, as you peer down, um, you see these small little shapes of the children kind of disappearing into the crowds, <laughs> um, and you see sort of like. Um, like Atta and Frida looking up at you and as you glance over you can see uh, Algonon and Cavern kind of on the other side like, over over that way um, and it would seem that um, like there's a final kind of cheer and applause um, and you see Tavarian kind of just slowly and gingerly do a little bit of a bow um, and she kind of like holds her hands up and she's kind of you know, pumping the crowd a little bit just to you know, give a giving them a little wave mm. um, and it would seem that the her speech um, is coming to um, an end um, as that happens you notice um, a like a squire or a scribe of some sort like a messenger they definitely look like a messenger um, who's kind of sneaks up onto the stage and um, sort of like behind everyone else and the this individual approaches Marshal Algarve and you see them sort of like whisper something in Algarve's ear um, and even from this distance like Algarve's body language is clear as day to read that he did not appreciate the news that he'd just been given um, mm. and you see him look from the messenger and then his eye his gaze turns back to Tavarien and then looking as he sees the crowd start to disperse um, Algarve says something to one of the black guards and they quite quickly remove themselves from the stage hmm. um, and disappear back towards uh, the keep um, and as you ponder what on earth was happening uh, as the crowds begin to disperse, you can start to see that like, as the crowd becomes thinner, you can see the children kind of moving about and sort of like seemingly harassing people that are wearing the slightest shades of purple. <laughs> um, and Just sort sigh. of like trying to like drag them back <laughs> through the crowds. Uh, and a lot of these kind of adults are like, get off, and, like throwing the, <laughs> the kids off. But as they as they do, you notice that more and more of them are gravitating to a spot relatively near the front of the stage, uh, quite central. Hmm. Now, and as the crowds part, you see a couple of the kids stop as they notice a woman wearing a shocking purple coat with a top hat both hands lent like holding the top of a cane a walking stick um that's kind of pressed against the ground um and as the kids surround her um you see the woman kind of slowly look down to them and just sort of like chatter and nod and um kind of she she kneels down on one knee and starts talking to the kids uh and you realize like based off Lazy Tom's rather suspect drawing. This is almost certainly her. Okay. So I'm immediately going to see if I can catch the eye of someone on my crew. Um, I, I know Algie and Cavern are together, Atta and Frida mm-hmm. are together, so I'm going to see if any of them are kind of looking so that I can sort of give a signal and point in, in that direction. Sure. Okay. Um, in which case the other four of you uh, collectively as you kind of peer, you peer up at Magpie um, it's quite clear that Magpie has noticed something um, and when you see your Ace of Our Companion like frantically pointing towards the front of the, the now dispersing crowd um, Magpie as you, as you kind of look back 
um, you see that the kids have kind of taken a step back from the woman um, and they all appear to be clutching something and one of them as one of them moves what they're holding um, excitedly in their hands you see the glint of the purple light coming from above um, reflect off what seems to be a coin like a gold coin um, and the kids just sort of like, <gasps> like you see them looking at each other excitedly and then just kind of wildly running off into the crowd seemingly forgetting mm. um, Atta's prize because they've just been given gold coins right um, and you watch the Lorivar woman stand back up straight, uh, or watches the children disperse, and then there's a moment where she looks up to the stage, and she and Tavarien both catch one another's gazes. And Tavarien, who up to this point had a very... We've, I've just given a speech, and I'm being the kind of the mascot of the city, happy, happy... There's a moment where she freezes, she sees the law of our woman, and the demeanor changes for a moment before she also leaves the stage. Mm. Um, and as you you see that as the purple where the purple woman Lorava um, looks around the crowd, sees everyone dispersing, you see her begin to head what is colloquially known as north. Mm. Um, given that there is no real compass direction in this place, uh, but north okay. towards Abbot's Gate. So, okay. I'm gonna, now that I have spotted our target, I'm gonna you know, climb down as fast as I can uh, and start moving north sure. towards wherever she seems to be heading to. Okay. Um, in which case, yeah, as you begin heading down uh, are you kind of rendezvousing with the others or are you uh if i can s smoothly do it without losing too much time i will absolutely try and meet up with the others yeah sure. in which case yeah as you begin heading down now having clocked your eyes on your mark um and as you rush to kind of join up rejoin your companions let's go have a quick break <sighs> Hi, DM Dan here. Thank you so much for watching the first episode of the brand new second campaign in the Elsewhere setting, Elysia Rising. If you like what you saw, make sure to hit the like button and comment down below. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications of any new uploads. <laughs>